Today's breakfast is egg and cheese sandwich with fried avocado and some fried avocado on the side. It is an absolute beautiful morning today. Walk with me. Let's leave the past behind. Walk with me. There's something else we need to find. Good morning, everyone. Aja here from Pandemonium. We finally finished the water system, so let me show you. Here's the inlet pipe, which I showed in a previous video. We have the outlet hose run, and it's insulated through this cabinet here, and then down into the PVC pipe. And then the PEX runs all the way. We've already buried it. All the way to this outlet right here. Jeff's finishing the fence by burning it off, just to protect the wood. The shower is working again. Jeff's finishing the fence by burning it off just to protect the wood. The shower is working again. And so is the laundry facility. And here is where everything runs. And so is the laundry facility. And here is where everything is connected to. So the PEX, we did have to change one thing about the shower system. I was collecting rainwater off of this and it went into the shower barrels. But the shower barrels just don't warm up quick enough. We find it easier to use the smaller bucket and we spray the garden hose in there and then the hot water heater can warm it up. Because unfortunately this only warms it up 20 degrees warmer than what the ambient temperature is. Right now it says the water in there is 79 degrees so it'll warm it up 20 degrees more than that. Oh my God, that feels so much better. Wow. Wow. I gotta get a load of laundry in and there's something else we wanna work on today. So from this area here, we're going to run the drip system. That'll water this whole garden area. I still have more beds to make, but for now I just wanna go ahead and get all the water lines down so I know where to plant. There's one thing in this bathroom is that this cement pad gets pretty hot so we put a bamboo mat down hopefully that'll stay cooler because we don't have the shade cover up here anymore it's just the sun is beating down and it makes that cement hot we took it down because of the last windstorm got pretty bad and it was all over the place not to mention it's nice to take a shower in the sun and outside Okay, well, we've been working on this most part of the day. It is the drip system. All the lines are laid for this bed. And I already have stuff planted. So I did the green beans and sweet peas and also cucumbers. There's one of each there. And then on the back side here is the corn. And then sunflowers. And then sunflowers go the rest of the way down. I'm not sure what I'm going to plant here just yet, or if anything, because 
I'm still worried about the nights being too cold, so I'm really focused on the brassicas and the lettuce, and that'll probably be this line here, so I could go ahead and plant something out here later. We've run the line under here, buried it just a little bit, and brought it back up. Now we're going to run the drip system for this bed here. There's going to be four in this bed because it's such a wide bed. The way this drip system runs, it runs parallel, so I have to extend the bed because I won't be able to run a line this way. I have to extend the bed all the way to the fence and then just plant on each side. So that's one thing I have to change about this. So all you do is just cut it to fit and then you put it on this nozzle, poke a hole in the drip system, and then just attach it. It's very basic, simple. You just slip it on and then we're going to poke a hole with this tool. Might have cut that a little too long. That'll be fine though. That's probably the hardest part is pushing it through the tubing. Yeah, because the tubing bends and then... Did you get it? Since the garden bed is so big, we're going to leave a pathway in the middle. That way we can walk in between here to check on the plants or harvest or whatever. It's looking good. We did extend the outer perimeter. The cardboard is down. I just have to put the compost on top of it and then mulch it. And we left a walkway on this side. Since we really couldn't run the line this way, I'm sure I could figure something out. But it just makes for a great pathway. Not to mention it's shaded most of the day by the fence. So this will work out much better. Adding garden staples right where the connectors are just to hold it down so it doesn't move. I'm gonna probably have to hammer that in. You cut the end here and then you just fold it over and put this on and it prevents the water from spilling out. Okay. Are you checking out the work, Moo Moo? Huh? Were you checking out the work? So we've got these two beds done. They're ready to be planted in. I think that might be it for the season. I'm not sure yet. There is more room, but it is shaded by the juniper. This is where one more bed is going to go and then another one here later. Another beautiful day here on the homestead. It's a little breezy, but it feels nice because it's supposed to be 80 one or 82 degrees today we're going to be working on more of the drip system which is going to go through this bed here or these two beds here this one is a little more complex than the one we put in yesterday which was basically drip tape it drips every foot so you put your plants every foot this one you can actually go to specific plants and it has uh, misters it has the spray nozzles and also dripper emitters. So the inlet is going to be here and we're going to run it kind of diagonal because we can branch off of this main line. This is the feeder line here. And then it's going to go across and into this bed here. So do we want to... Okay, so these we can run like this, these plants, right?
So I had actually ordered one of these thermometers, but it came in broken, so Ed brought over his, along with his pitchfork, so that'd be easier. I need to get one of these. But what I really want to do is see how hot the compost is getting. Let's see. Oh my god, I can't even shove it down there. Okay, the temperature's going up, so we'll check it here in a minute. And the seeds and all that. Okay, so I might have to actually turn it. Right now it's sitting at about oh, 105. Yeah, it does stink. So after we're done with the drip system, I'm going to turn this pile and wet every layer down. I wanted to get, uh, give this a test just to see how these blue ones do. Oh my god, we didn't need all that over here. Look at it, it's like getting this whole thing. But you can you can control it by turning this, I think. Turn it down. There we go. Yeah, we don't need that much right now. Oh my god, those are those aren't drippers, they're like sprayers. Okay. That's why I wanted to turn it on just to see what it does. Okay, so now I have to rethink these because I didn't know I thought they just the jib was just a little bit, but no. These actually cover a big area, which is awesome. Amazing. We have all this side done over here. So we're just going to test it out right now. Then afterwards we have to come across and then get into this bedding area. Ugh. Okay, they're on and spraying, but I have to cut some of them down. Oh yeah, that's definitely that one. It needs to be more drippy. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust them now. So some of these don't, some towards the end won't get, aren't getting well, through pressure. you got to turn down some of these. Okay, this line is done. We were going to come across here, but it is seeming to be at its max when we finished this bed here. So I don't want to strain it anymore or it won't water all the plants. Not to mention I'm going to plant all this out with shade loving plants like hostas and ferns and stuff like that and I need a watering system for that so I don't want to overtax this sector here so we're probably just going to cut it here and clip it off and then use this remaining line. Not to mention I'm going to plant all this out with shade loving plants like hostas and ferns and stuff like that and I need because it has to get all of this here and also along the fence. So I changed a few things here. I spread out the plants more and the only thing I'm planting here now is the periwinkle because that I realize will spread pretty far. Although it doesn't like drought or clay soil which is what I have so I don't think it's going to spread too much but if it does spread throughout here that'll be awesome and the lilac is still back there and I have the um, barberry here and there. I removed the flowering plants that were there. I put the dwarf burning bush there. I had it over here in this bed but I thought it looked better along the fence. Then there's the fig tree another lilac and then I have the Nanking cherry which is at the end here which obviously still needs to be planted out. Some other plants that need to be planted out which I've placed over here these are the common snowball viburnums. They get about six feet tall so I thought they would frame this gate quite nicely once they 
grow up and fill out. I'm still trying to figure out what to plant in this bed because as you can see it's full sun right now. In the morning it's full sun, then mid-afternoon it's shaded completely and then it's full sun again at the late afternoon to evening. This bed right here stays shady all day long so I planted a fern, a hosta, astabel, have a tricertus there, hosta, and then the calla lily because this is full sun most of the day. Just at the end of the day it gets shade. And then I believe these are daffodils and a dahlia right here because this is sun most of the day. Once everything starts to grow and fill out then I'll give a full garden tour during the summertime. We're taking a ride into town and we're going to go to the hardware store. We've got to pick up a few things. It's not that far, so I decided to take the side-by-side -side, and we don't have that much to pick up. So I need one more of these because we were missing just about four foot. And these are six foot long. Oh, I could use this as I'm borrowing ads, which is it? Uh, 52, oh, 51.99. Woo, those things are expensive. Wow. Oh, there's a different one here. I'll check and see. Is it the same thing? Yeah, basically. Just different handle. They've got black gold. I've used that before last season, but it's not organic. And peat moss. And what is this? More black gold. I think that's basically it. Oh. They got an organic blend there. I might go with that. Oh, they got just core. This is actually coconut core. It's supposed to be good for holding water. And it's OMRI listed, meaning it's organic. So they have the black gold natural organic um, outdoor planting mix. And it is OMRI listed. So I'll probably get a couple bags of this. Okay, now that we know how this basically works, we are rerunning the line. We're going to use this whole main line over here because this can hold more pressure than those teeny weeny lines. And I had the line running along just the small line. And what happened is this wasn't getting enough pressure over here. Now we've run the main line over here and we're going to put a connector right there with the four T's on it. And that way that will water this area and it'll keep pressure hopefully. So what we did is most ran to three except this one here. It's only running to two. But like I said, this cannot hold the pressure and we can't expect it to. The pressure has to come from the main line. That's why we have to run this the whole garden bed. Which works perfectly because it's the length of the garden bed. So... Okay, everything is done and we've run everything to the main line so it keeps pressure better. Yeah, I wish I would have realized, but you know, it was our first time installing this kind of drip system. And actually this drip system was a lot cheaper than the one that went in the garden. That was like 150. This one was only 45. So we can definitely get another one of these for this side over here to run all the way along. To the fence. Okay, cut it on. <laughs> it's gonna cut the pump on. Or actually the outlet for it. And then we have to readjust probably since we um, added some things in and took some things out. Well, I hear them coming up. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Oh uh, yeah, we do have to readjust like this one here. That's spraying way too much. Turn it down. It should just be dripping. Yeah. Perfect. Same with that. <sighs> drip, drip, drip. Now these we have set too low. That needs to come up. Yeah, I think it's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Yep, that's getting all of that. Okay. And this one probably needs to be adjusted out a little. Just a little bit. Oh, I see the water. It doesn't actually. You, you can leave it low because the water's going to um, flow down because this is all downhill. So it'll get the alyssums. Okay, and that one is definitely got to be increased because it's supposed to get this whole area here. There we go. Perfect. 
Nice. And this one is supposed to get, is that dripping well? I cut that one off on purpose because it, it, it was already wet, but that's, make sure it's just dripping because that will fill up really quickly. Okay. I like how you can adjust these yeah. for specifics. Yeah. That one needs to be, because um, it's getting all four of these plants right here. So, more. Perfect. Yeah, everything seems to be keeping pressure. Like, yeah, that one needs to be adjusted up. Oh, yeah, you have to hold those because they click. That's good. Yeah, um, you can move it forward into the plants and hopefully it'll water the plants better. Just, just a tiny bit. Okay. All right, and then this one has to water all four of these plants. A little bit more. Yeah, they're now um, the pressure isn't affecting them as much as it was before. You could really tell in the lower lines over here. That one's completely cut off. Oh, this one is on full blast over here. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, that's right. Okay. Yeah, those ones over there are going wild, too. Yeah, because they're hooked to the main line, so they're not having that pressure problem anymore. Okay, that's perfect right there. And so is that. Yeah, they're, see how these are holding pressure better? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, these were just dribbling. Yeah, you don't want to go more than about 8 or 10 feet on the little tubes. Right. It's pretty good. Just turning that one on. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Perfect. And that one seems... Oh, that can be cut down right there. But this one seems good. And this one seems good. Yay, the Oregon Sugar Snaps. So if you're ever hooking up a drip system, remember that it's not good to run those small lines too much because it loses pressure. It always has to be fed off of the main line. Yay, I'm super excited that we got two garden beds done. That leaves one, two, three, four. Four left. Oh, no, five because we had to do this one too. Mumu, what you doing? Are you gardening? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so actually let's count them there's one and these two beds here they're separate but they can probably be hooked together if we run the line sideways and same with this one here we could probably run the line sideways so that's two three and then we have this big one here which is four so only four Oh, and don't forget, we do still have the solar one, and this one will run off of its own barrel, because we do have a barrel for it. So that one can go on one of the, maybe this middle one can work for that one, because how long is the feed line on this one? Oh, 100 feet, wow. And this last one was only 26. So that's as big as the one that was in the garden, because that one's 100 feet too. Uh, okay, it is about 1.15. I've been editing and I'm exhausted, but I wanted to get this video out. Um, I just wanted to go over a few things. I'm really excited about the drip system or the watering system because it just makes life easier on the homestead. I thought it only took me about an hour to water everything, but as the garden grows, it's seeming to be at least a half a day project just to get everything watered. And I have to water, depending on how hot it is, um, like usually I try to do it two to three times a week. But if it's once it gets hot, that might become every day watering. And that's just a lot of water. But I want to also talk about my cost in my watering so if i go through about a hundred gallons of water for the garden um in a week and usually to put 500 gallons in my 2600 gallon tank cost me about it's 1350 so about 14 bucks um so that's not bad 14 bucks for five weeks because that's 500 gallons and 100, 100 gallons I'm estimating a week. So that's not bad at all. Um, 
So I'm really happy about that. I'm fortunate that we have somewhere that we can go pick up water. But also, if I don't have the means or want to go pick up the water, water only costs us about $125 for 20 or 2,000 gallons. I was going to say the full tank, which was 26. But no, for 2,000 gallons, it is cheaper to buy it if we go and get it ourselves. But then, you know, there's gas involved and stuff like that. I can't believe it's so late. I am exhausted. Hopefully in the next video, though, we will escape the property and go on a picnic and an adventure, maybe a hike. I just need a break from all the projects, which I knew was going to happen when we came back here to the homestead, that there were going to be a lot of projects, and I wanted to get a lot of things done. But that doesn't mean that I can't go and have fun still. So hopefully in the next video, which will be tomorrow, uh, we have something planned. We're going to have a picnic and also maybe go do a hike by a lake. So that should be amazing. And I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me in this video. If you like the video and the project, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to check out more videos, they'll be over here. If you want to check out Patreon or subscribe, the buttons are over here. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe and onward bound or happy homesteading. Bye for now. Mwah.